Hey, it's so good to see you tonight as we break bread. I know that God wants to answer prayer and he's laid on my heart a message for you. Recently, we've been looking at the whole subject of thriving. I know Andrew's morning messages have been touching on that theme for a good few weeks now. And yet, folks, I'm so aware that many people will feel or maybe actually know for sure that they've lost something during this past year. It's been such a season of change, a season of challenge. And my topic tonight is about the word lost. In a moment or two, we'll read a story that speaks of things that were lost. But you know what? Maybe you're asking yourself, what have I lost? Has it been your courage for a career path? Has it been your livelihood? Maybe your whole world has just crumbled in front of you. Maybe you've lost your ability to trust because of situations that have really challenged that this year. Or maybe it's your place in society and you don't know where you fit anymore. Maybe you've lost your sense of direction. I'm praying that this message will really touch your heart, give you some inspiration and help you as you go forward. The gospel is full of stories about finding what's lost, stories about health, stories about fresh revelation, about provision and relationships. We find stories about purpose and hope restored. Maybe this time together is gonna to do something for you and restore something that's been lost. A soul that was lost is the most celebrated find, you know, we, we read that heaven celebrates when people give their lives to Jesus and their soul is secured for heaven. But if you lost something, maybe you've lost your way in life or maybe it's your passion for God that's just begun to wane and you don't know how to recapture that or reinvent it or reinvigorate it. With the diversion and confusion that we've had this last year, I know that many have found this season like no other and it's taxed them in a way that they never ever imagined possible. You see, many have lost their way in life and that their career path has just completely taken a total diversion. We're going to pray before we finish today for you. If it's health, if it's strength, if it's money, if it's security and a sense of purpose, we're going to be praying for you before the end of today's session. I find that so many have had their studies and their sequence of events to learn whether it's been online with Zoom or letters sent through the post or emails that maybe didn't arrive. They found it a complete breaking down of communication has, has staggered their studies now and caused them to have like a morphed view of what their education should be like. Maybe God will help this session in your heart to cause strength to rise again. Maybe God will help you to have faith for the future. Maybe your hope's been uh, dashed because a course of treatment was postponed or that uh, reaching in of support has been put on hold and you just don't know where to turn. I know that the, pa the pastors are here for you tonight. They don't just pray, but they've actually got immediate access to means and resources support and blessing that you could maybe tap into. It could be food. We have food going out from the building every week. Maybe it's the support of, of a phone call and you just want to beat that loneliness. Don't think of just a spiritual answer. It might be a very practical thing that we can do for you following tonight's session. We don't uh, walk into this blindly. We reach to God and we know that we need a miracle for some of the answers that we're reaching for. But God is a God of miracles. I want to say also, maybe you've lost trust in the authorities that are over your life. And that's something that needs to be rekindled or protected all over again. We want to find a sense of integrity, don't we? And in today's world, it's really difficult to, to feel secure with that because there's so much fake news going out, out there and so many different conversations that leave us a little bit uh, confused. Let me read to you from Luke chapter 15. And we're looking at it in the Common English Bible. We're starting at verse one in chapter 15 of this Gospel of Luke. And I really pray that it will just bless you as we delve deeper into what some of these words mean and what God wants to say to us. Actually in the Common English Bible, it says it, the occasions for celebration. 
All the tax collectors and sinners were gathering around Jesus to listen to him. The Pharisees and legal experts were grumbling, saying, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Jesus told them this parable. Suppose someone among you had 100 sheep and lost one of them. Wouldn't he leave the other 99 in the pasture and search for the lost one until he finds it? And when he finds it, he's thrilled and places it upon his shoulders. When he arrives home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Come and celebrate with me because I found my lost sheep. I love this story. In the same way, I tell you, there'll be more joy in heaven over the sinner who changes both heart and life than over 99 righteous people who have no need to change their hearts and their lives. The story goes on, folks. It says, or oh, what woman, in verse 8, or oh, what woman, if she owns 10 silver coins and loses one of them, won't light a lamp and sweep the house, searching her home carefully until she finds it? When she finds it, she calls together her friends and her neighbors, saying, celebrate with me because I found my lost coin. And in the same way, I tell you, my joy breaks out in the presence of God's angels over every sinner who changes both heart and life. You know, here we have the story of a lost sheep and a lost coin. One is breathing and the other is a currency. One is born on the shoulders, the other is kept in a pocket. Where do you feel like you fit today? Do you want to be upon his shoulders or would you just be happy to be in his pocket? One willfully wandered away, the sheep took its own choice and just went. The other was carelessly dropped by someone else. But either way, these things were lost. One chose to go, the other was just misplaced. Yet both are carried home with excitement, we read. The joy of finding something that's been lost. I don't know if you've ever lost anything. I often spend a long time searching for that book or for that note or for that letter. I spend a long time searching for an item that maybe for a while wasn't even precious until I realized I'd lost it. Did you, mind you, knowingly retreat from the Lord? Have you become the lost one in his book? Have you become the one he's searching for? Or do you feel like you've been cast aside by someone? I'm praying this message is going to really comfort and help you tonight. Here we're given hope because both are retrieved with joy, the sheep and the coin, and they're celebrated with friends. I love it, the fact that the Lord would celebrate us. You know, we're not a burden to him. He never gets tired or bored with this. He never finds our concerns and the things that we get involved with too much to handle. He's always joy-filled when we come up close to him. In the story, it's true they both have great value that brings with it exuberant joy to the owner, the Lord himself. Ephesians 2.10 actually tells us, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We are his workmanship means we're his handiwork. We're his accomplishment. We're actually his poetry. Today, I want to remind us all that there is worth in every single soul. I want to encourage you, all of you that connect in for friendship, maybe for direction, maybe for provision or support. It really doesn't matter as long as you keep connecting in. Also, I want to help those who are online tonight receiving this incoming uh, call. Take note, take care, be kind, be thoughtful, be gentle, be generous. You know, the sheep wasn't injured or its wool matted, but it was still lost. The coin wasn't broken, but it had still been misplaced or discarded. These things were lost, but they didn't know it. Maybe tonight you have not realized that you're lost, but you're reaching in. I pray that the Lord will just speak into your spirit and draw you close. May we, may we be magnetic for you, that you want to find out more and maybe reach a hand across the screen that you're looking at right now. Do you think you may be the one that's lost today 
Or do you know that you've lost something this past year? We don't need a dramatic story, do we? Just to be disconnected is enough to put us in harm's way. We must calm the mad chatter of our heart. I found during this past year it quite difficult uh, for me to just calm and quieten and listen carefully because of all the voices that have been bombarding my thinking. Jesus says, I want to carry you when you're too weak to walk, sit with you when you sleep and dance with you at the dawn of a new day. This is just like a prophetic word for somebody that's listening tonight. I would say Jesus is saying that to you. In Psalm 116 and verse 7, the psalmist writes, You've delivered my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, and my soul from death. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I know that also that that's a verse for someone watching tonight. Our shepherd finds us and rejoices as he sets us steady. Once he's carried us home, we can walk again with freedom. Once he's carried us home, he'll never, ever, ever let us go. The word lost in that scripture there means to be separated out. It means to be cut off from the source of life. Is that what you're feeling tonight? Is that what you've sensed has happened gradually to you over this past 12 months? Maybe you feel like you've been cut off from strength or protection. Maybe you've lost a marriage or a loved one. Maybe you've lost yourself or maybe you've just given everything away and you don't know how to reclaim it all. Have you been assaulted in your health, your direction or your purpose? Or is your soul suffering today in some other way? Have you decided not to dream again? I believe that's happened to quite a number of people. They had such high hopes and yet everything is up in the air in fragments. May this word encourage you to dream again. Jesus is the good shepherd. We're singled out by him and we're separately loved. We're not just bundled together. Didn't the story tell us? The shepherd left 99 to find the one. See yourself as that one. Your dreams are not lost on him. This story includes the effort, the journey, and the energy to find one sheep on one lost coin. 99 sheep, as I say, left to find the one that was wandering. The shepherd in danger of the dark, maybe, or the beasts that could have hurt him there. And yet he continued until he was successful. The woman sweeping and searching with vigor for the one lost coin. How great is that? You are unique and you're worth the search. Are you lost today? Have you lost something? Do you need the shepherd's shoulder? Psalm 17 verse 8 says in the New King James, Keep me as the apple of your eye. In fact, would you know, in the contemporary English version, which was only written in 1995, it actually says, protect me as you would your very own eyes. Protect me, Lord, like you would protect your own pupil. Guard me as you would guard your own eye. Yes, you're unique. You're not one of many. You need to know that, folks. You may feel like you're in a queue for a call even tonight. Wouldn't that be an amazing queue to believe for, that we've so many reaching in that there becomes a queue that hold on because there are many. I think there are over 20 to 30 pastors sometimes ready online on Facebook and YouTube and on the app and all of these different places for you to reach in. You're precious, you're valuable. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost, even when the loss is self-inflicted. Emily Sandy once wrote a song called Heaven. I was looking for it earlier today in the lyrics, and it said, Oh, heaven, heaven, I wake with good intentions, but the day, it always lasts too long. Maybe for you, your day just lasts too long and you feel like you lose it by nighttime. Jesus is looking for you. And once he's got you, he'll not let you go. This shepherd, the Lord of our life, the Lord of Psalm 23, carries us. In the story, the shepherd didn't drive or even lead the sheep home. 
In Luke, where we read earlier, we find he carried him across his shoulders, intimately close to the mouth that would speak words of love, words of comfort and words of calm. Whose mouth are you close beside tonight? When we allow him to carry us up close, we get to hear and know his voice. We can rest beneath his influence and be inspired by moments in his presence. There's nothing quite like being in the presence of the King, the shepherd who loves you, the Lord who laid his life down for you. His word brings with it his presence. Did you know that? His word brings with it his presence. It's all about him and it carries his fragrance because it's inspired by him. Be diligent, dig deep and hang around so that you can get to know him and understand his ways. We've read it recently. It says in 2 Timothy 2, 15, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divide in the word of truth. That can quite it sound quite academic, can't it? It can sound quite deliberate and forced. And yet when we read underneath it, it means be eager to learn rightly and rightly divide. It actually means when you're studying carefully, rightly dividing the word, it means you make a straight cut. You don't uh, mess it up or mix it up, dilute it or compromise. When we find the meanings in the Common English Bible, it says, interpret the message of truth. So those words rightly divide are actually saying, interpret the message of truth. And in the Amplified, it's, it's saying, accurately handle as carefully as we would want him to handle us. He wants us to handle his word with the same kind of diligence and care. In the Living Bible, it says, know what his word says and means. I like that. Know what his word says and means because as you get into the word, you're in his presence, you start to get to know more about him and more of him. You get to know what he's like and his, his great and beautiful intentions towards you. I want to say to you too, when, when you look at that scripture there, and it's a study to show yourself approved, the word study could take you on a wee journey. It means be diligent, be quick, speed study. And if you dig deeper, even in the Greek, if you like to do that, you will actually find yourself reading the words footstool. If you study long enough, you'll be afforded a footstool. You'll have somewhere to rest, somewhere to sit, somewhere to dwell and relax. You will find it in Strong's if you go far enough. Jude 21 says this, Now to the one with enough power to prevent you from stumbling, stumbling into sin and bring you faultless before his glorious presence to stand before him with ecstatic delight. It means that in verse 21, it says, keep, stay, hold yourself in God's love. And as you get through to verse 24, it's saying he's able to carry you home. It's saying he's the one that will not only pick you up to be presentable, but he will carry you and keep you presentable. And he is the one who presents you before his father. Sometimes we get saved. We feel like everything's changed and then we start to fail. And all we do is step back into lots of hard work, effort, worry, fear and guilt. But this scripture here in Jude 24 says he's the one who has enough power to prevent us from stumbling into sin. He's enough power to bring us faultless before his glorious presence to stand before him with ecstatic delight. He picks you up but he carries you on. Nothing will ever change or break or cause that situation to fold and crumble. He will carry you across heaven's threshold. That's a comfort for some people because they struggle, as Emily Sandy wrote in her song, with the day being too long. They've loads of resolve in the morning, loads of courage, loads of conviction, loads of focus, loads of stamina, but by evening, 
it's all waning and they struggle. But this is an encouragement for you to know that Jesus said, I'll not only pick you up, I'll take you right on through. I love that. If you're feeling lost tonight, maybe this is helping you. If you're feeling like you've lost something, maybe this is helping you. Don't let your mood or your past memory mar the message. Don't think of past failures. Don't let people's words over you. Don't let your own self-descriptions and self-talk undermine the promises that God has placed in your ears tonight. He is the good shepherd. What have you lost today? Once he picks you up, he'll not put you down. I'm praying that as we pray now, and as we look into the pastor's eyes, those online, those that are waiting for your call, those that are looking for you to connect, that we'll find you experiencing the love of a good shepherd. I'm praying that you will find that sense of comfort, that sense of connection, that sense of hope rekindled that things can change. We're not, as we've said in days gone by, thinking that the Lord's looking for perfection. He's really hungry for our affection. You know, when the lamb is over the shoulders of the shepherd, he's very close. They can almost smell each other's breath. And yet there's a sense of we're together in this. We're going to move forward. We're not staying in this wild terrain. We're coming to a safe place. There's a sense of connection, a sense of gratitude, a sense of joy because the shepherd's found his sheep, but now the sheep knows I'm home and I'm dry. Isn't that a wonderful story? I just want to pray with you before we finish. And I know we'll be breaking bread soon when we, uh, Andrew and I, take those few minutes. But maybe you've felt that you've, you've let it all go and your dreams have died. Maybe you've felt that someone else made a decision and took away your choices. Maybe you feel like life's just too complicated now to try and build going forward. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray for those watching that you would give them a sense of hope, a sense of focus and direction, that whether they feel like they're the one that's lost or an aspect of the life has been stolen from them or just dropped or they just lost it themselves. We thank you, Lord, that this story in Luke tells us that things can be brought back. Things that were, were just dropped in a moment of misunderstanding. Maybe it's a relationship that broke through misunderstanding. Father, I thank you that you can rekindle, recover and repair all the things that we bring to you. And I pray for those watching right now, Lord, that they would sense a comfort, a strength and a courage rising back up in their spirit, that that word lost would become something of the past, something of a memory, something of yesterday's story, and that they would know you've got something new for them today. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who felt like the opportunities have gone, that you'd rekindle a sense of future, dream, courage, faith, expectancy, that you'd rekindle a sense of, I can do this, I can reinvent, I can start again. Lord, I thank you that whatever's gone on this past year, if we can stay within the, the hearing distance of your voice, hope can be rekindled and it can be rebirthed. Let it be in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I know we're going to be making a, an appeal soon. But I just want to tell you that we've got the Gospel of John that we could be sending to you. And sure enough, we could send this to you if you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus tonight. Soon enough, as Andrew, break, Andrew and I break bread together and pray, we're going to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord and we'll offer you the chance to, to have this booklet sent out. Just for now, I'll sign off, but we'll see you again in a moment or two together with Andrew. God bless.